it's my um, honor and pleasure to be able to introduce David Harvey to you. Um, David Harvey probably needs no introduction, uh, but I'm going to introduce him anyway. Um, and um, for me, it's a personal pleasure because uh, David Harvey has uh, been very influential in uh, my own um, academic career since I studied with one of his early, uh, let's say, early disciples or graduate students and knew David um, from early on in my own, in my own career. He has a very decisive um, influence. And there's a lot of things, I mean, uh, someone like David Harvey's had a long and distinguished career uh, from his PhD at Cambridge, um, through his first position at Bristol, on to Johns Hopkins University in uh, Baltimore um, in 1969, coming back to England in 1987 to go to Oxford, back to Johns Hopkins in the late 1980s, here at LSE as a Miliband Fellow in the late 90s, and at the City University of New York um, since 2001. And through that career, um, I think we can say that um, there is a kind of a, <coughs> an upward arc of uh, notoriety um, of, of many, many path-baking path works in uh, geography and actually way beyond ge geography. Um, we might say an impact across the social sciences and the humanities, which is very unusual for, um, in this world, right? It's a, it's a small class of people that gets to make a huge influence outside of their own field. Um, I wanted to say just a few things so that I don't take up too much time, um, other than, you know, sort of saying, you know, here is someone who has had um, the long list of um, awards, honorary doctorates, translation, translations into many, many languages, and so on. One thing I wanted to kind of signal, which I think is, um, which, which threads throughout uh, uh, David Harvey's work is the quality of the writing. That um, you have someone who is capable of taking on um, extremely complex issues and making path-breaking uh, kind of uh, conceptual advances and can write about it all beautifully. And this is through, I think, every one of his books is beautiful writing. Something, again, I think is maybe, unfortunately, a bit too limited in social science today. Um, I think back to David's uh, really sort of first big impact book, Explanation in Geography, which is in the late 1960s, and where he's already searching for what is the kind of core of the discipline, what's it able to explain, um, how do we explain uh, the phenomena that geographers are concerned with, and he's taking on the positivist tradition in geography, which is dominant at that time, and, and also a rising in importance with a new statistical techniques and the rise of allied fields such as regional science. And he's searching right then for what is the geographical object and what is a geographical method, something which, of course, everyone in geography continues doing and hand-wringing about um, today. Um, but from there, I think the big, uh, what, we, what most people think is the, is the kind of the big forward-moving event is the next step, where in um, 1973, I think, um, he publishes Social Justice and the City after moving to America. And um, this is coming about in the context of the crisis of American cities and society in the late 1960s, where uh, David Harvey is in Baltimore, a city afflicted particularly strongly by the dynamics of racism, poverty, urban decline, economic dislocation, and so on. And on, on the one hand, and on the other hand, a country in which land speculation, land building, investment in other places is rising. And David Harvey projects into geography and other social sciences, uh, a Marxist framework as a way to make sense of these events with its sharp distinction between the use value of land and cities uh, and the exchange value, that is their market value. And Harvey develops this analysis technically 
and he claims that it's not just like the other, like the economists are claiming, that land markets have certain failures or imperfections. That's the language we usually find in economics. But that the kind of, let's call it radical or revolutionary claim is they're not set up to be efficient. That they're not set up to allocate the functions of things to places. They're principally set up to extract value from land, natural resources, and the built environment and under conditions of scarcity and to transfer it from one social class to another and that power has a big role to play in affecting this transfer. And it's a kind of a core dynamic of how cities run but also how the economy in general runs. And later on, this analysis will be developed in, um, I can't, I don't know exactly how many books, but many, many books um, of Marxist analysis, one of which um, puts forth a concept that is at the core of debates in geography and development studies today, and which David Harvey labels the spatial fix, in which he argues that there's a pivotal role of the built environment, such as housing, for example, as an investment device that is prone to make super profits for those who have it, especially when other parts of the economy are not fundamentally doing very well. And that it's this fix for capitalism that comes about through <coughs> land and space and the built environment that is one of the key moments in the capitalist uh, dynamic of development, but also, of course, one of the key moments in the generation of crises and the capitalist system. That is, it's something that's prone to sow the seeds of its own destruction and to bring the economy down with it in what we would now call violent asset price <coughs> declines, right? So here we are, of course, many decades later, living through one of the real big ones, but it's important to understand that in the seminal works in the 1970s and early 1980s, David Harvey is already on this question uh, making uh, sustained analyses of what's, of what's going on and why it's central to the way the system works. I could say a few other things about the, the breadth of David Harvey's work. It's not just that he carries out what we might call rigorous techno technical analysis in the Marxist tradition or Marxist economics. He does Marxist political economics, Marxist politics and sociology throughout his career. He has books that are on, the, on class consciousness and class conflict, such as a whole set of books on the urban uh, conflicts in Paris in the 19th century, in the Paris uh, Commune. And he has more recent books on social movements in the world today, contestation over the environment, um, the contestation over uh, cosmopolitanism uh, in today's globalizing world, the analysis of neoliberalism in the context of today's globalizing, uh, globalization processes, um, and the critique of contemporary ideologies of neoliberalism as uh, central to the way that class power has been uh, reasserted and inequality increased in the context of contemporary globalization processes. So it's a broad sweep of work, we might say, outward from the core economics into political economics, sociology, politics, um, uh, and even class ideology and, and, and issues of consciousness. And so this brings us to today where, it seemed, where what I learned is that David actually has two new books coming out. We're going to hear, I think, mostly about the new book called The Enigma of Capital. But it's also to be noted that for a um, very long time, David has taught classes on the analysis of Marx's uh, central work, right, capital. And that um, these um, lectures have been issued um, uh, in a new book called um, A Companion to Marx's Capital, which has also come out in 2010. So that's not doing um, justice to David Harvey, but um, I hope you'll agree that um, we are um, in the presence of a uh, very important 
uh, scholar and thinker and social critic and join me in welcoming him warmly to LSE. <laughs> <laughs>